The last tips video was so long that we made it into two parts featuring questions such as how do you still enjoy Genshin? Should you aim to get cons for your four star characters? How do you build unusual characters? What are some underrated weapons? And can Noel replace Zhang Li? Let's talk about 10 more questions that nobody wants to tell you. Welcome to Jello Impact where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. The best possible all-male team. Okay, well, Mono Geo has to be a contender. So what could be better than Mono Geo? Kaz was really good, so he could probably work with something. Not Child, because he needs Zhang Ling. Venti could work with something. Sucrose is a female. Zhang Ling is a female. Zhao needs Farzan, but he could work with Bennett. So let's see. We do have Bennett, so that's good. Ayato probably won't work but we'll see. Wanderer really needs Farazan, probably. Zhao probably does. Ooh, Al Haitham, I think that has some potential, but I think probably he needs Yaimiko. Singcho, that has potential. Mm, it's too bad that Nahida is a female for these purposes. Uh, we've got Baiju. Chong is probably not part of it. So we can, can do Hyper Bloom. Wow, there's really very few male Electro characters, because that pretty much means we can't do Al Haitham Spread or Al Haitham Hyper Bloom. Hyper Ayato is looking pretty good, like Mono Hydro Hyper Ayato. I'm thinking it could even be Risley. I would say one of these two. I'm not really sure which one of these two is exactly stronger, but one, well, I think I'd say one of these two is going to be the strongest male team. Cool question. Thanks. When do you stop farming an artifact set resin priority for endgame? This is kind of a choose your own adventure. I'll make a resin priority for endgame guide. Yeah, I think an ultimate endgame guide I'll make because this is, I can tell this is going to be a too long of a question. And then when do you stop farming an artifact set? Check out my you'll never farm artifacts the same way again video, but I'll include that in the, in the guide. Pattern of Genshin's meta shifts. I find this interesting because Genshin likes to switch up the meta for every new region and also with certain new characters. So let's see if we can identify any patterns. In the beginning, Vaporize, Reverse Melt, and Taser were probably the strongest teams. And then what shifted? And Venti was the strongest, was the strongest character by being ridiculous at crowd control. Also, yeah, Venti for, and then and then Child made Vaporize even stronger. Ganyu made Freeze ridiculously strong. Hu Tao improving Vaporize. Eula not really changing the meta. Ayaka keeping Freeze in the meta. Raiden a sort of different take on the national variant and her hyper team. So I'd say the meta was still sort of yeah, Kazuo probably being a really big meta shift. So when Kazuha came out, I say Bennett Kazuha was a really big meta shift. And shortly after that was when we saw the decline of Venti. So Freeze was kind of like that kind of Freeze was worse. Kazuha Freeze was sort of better. Double Hydro would say changed the meta a lot. And then Dendro with Hyper Bloom. And then in Fontaine, we haven't really had a meta shift yet. I would expect one non... I, I It seems to me that every region, there's kind of one Archon and one non-Archon character that really, really define the meta with Kazuha. It's probably Hu Tao and Venti being the first big ones. Then probably Kazuha. I don't know if Raiden really defined the meta. She was very good, but probably didn't define it. But Yelan being the next character that defined the meta. And both Nilu and Nahida, I would say, going a long way to defining the meta, along with Hyper Bloom, like Kuki and Raiden. So in Fontaine, I really do expect the Archon and probably one more character throughout Fontaine to really shift the meta. I don't think it's going to be, I don't think Linny changes the meta at all. I don't think Risley or Nivellet change the meta at all. So I think we're going to have to wait for the Archon and hopefully, hopefully Colorand does something really sick. Maybe even Navia, but that seems like too much copium. Hard to say. They're pretty unpredictable. They're pretty unpredictable. They, they release meta changing characters, but it's pretty hard to predict how things will actually change. Who is the most universal unit? Mm, you could make an argument for Nahida, for Ye for Sing Cho, for Kazuha. You could make strong arguments for all of them. But who has the most teams? Probably Kazuha. Probably Kazuha is the most universal unit. Raiden versus Hu Tao. At C0, they're pretty darn close. I would give Hu Tao the slight edge, but due to Raiden being good in single target or AoE, well, if you if you include Raiden Hyper Bloom, then it's Raiden. If you just include her as a damage dealer, it's probably Hu Tao at C0, and they're probably about equal when Hu Tao is C1, R1, and when Raiden is C2. They're probably pretty darn close. They're some of the best on-fielders in the game at that respective investment level. C0 Noel as a shielder replacement to Zhang Li. Fine for the overworld and early floors of the Abyss, but Zhang Li's really strong shield is one of his main selling points for the Abyss itself, and it also its universal element shred makes him irreplaceable. Noel, her shield is very strong when she's on field, but when she's off, it's kind of paper thin compared to what it was. Underrated weapons? Say Jade Wing Spear is pretty underrated. It's really good on Hu Tao, Sino, and Zhao. Actually a really, really good pull if you got it from the standard banner. It's fairly universal 
pistol as well people really underrate how much value you get from the passive with a bunch of characters as well even if they don't max it out you're still getting good value from it skyward blade really underrated big upgrade for sing cho because it's going to give a lot of er but also having a high base attack a little bit of crit rate great for bennett when he needs er great for ayato it's a really really underrated weapon actually viridus and hunt really good for oath sworn eye very underrated on yaimiko lion's roar super super underrated it's very comparable to five star weapons on characters that can actually use its passive so sing cho when you're doing double hydro or sing cho and raiden teams actually sorry not so much double hydro but on raiden teams for sure and on kaching it's very very comparable to five star weapons if you have this passive up this is a huge huge uh, bonus and very very underrated hakushin ring very underrated prototype star glitter underrated for characters that need a ton of er and don't want to build it so i like it on my yunjin for example not saying it's crazy but it's definitely underrated the new fontaine crackle sword is really underrated it's better than this one which was already underrated sapwood blade not people are talking about it enough the er plus the 120 elementary elemental mastery bonus that's really really good quite insane actually dark iron sword very very underrated i'd say the harbinger of dawn is sometimes overrated because it's hard to keep above 90 percent but it is really really good slingshot without a doubt is underrated on characters like tainari or yoimiya it competes better than almost all their four star options except for yoimiya's rough and really doesn't get that far away from five star options as well since tainari doesn't need base attack it actually gives a ton of crit rate and yoimiya gets a ton of base attack from bennett so she doesn't need the attack as much so slingshot very very underrated building unusual characters support how do you know what stats are good for them i mean number one way is to check my character guides i've made a lot of guides and unusual characters but especially if we're talking about supports that you build weirdly if they're not doing damage themselves you generally want to be making sure one you're getting enough burst time if they need their burst you'll want to be looking at what do they need to make their own kit function when then what can they do to benefit their team whether it's buff them maybe i'm using support dia with tenacity of the millilith to buff the team and then i'm using favonia so i can give more energy to the team so what can i do what do i need what do they need to do to fulfill their role then what can they do to help their team and that's generally what you're, you'll focus on to build them how do you still enjoy genshin i'm getting tired of it or whatever they want in this thing where like why do you build the characters just to clear the abyss just to clear that well i mean why do you play any game right it's to have fun if you're not having fun with the game then take a break you know delete it if you have to don't play for a while this is what i tell my wife all the time sometimes she feels like you know the daily commission grind is a bit of a chore i say stop if it's not fun then don't then don't play and that's the same with me like i i i always do my daily commissions because it doesn't take that long but if you're really really not enjoying them if you log on you absolutely hate it before i became a content creator i didn't do all the events because i found some of the mini games just just terrible so i didn't do them at all um it's totally fine to do that so number one don't play if you're not enjoying it and then genshin's the kind of game where you want to you want to set your own goals if you do enjoy genshin but you're you're kind of stuck or stagnant you, you got to set a goal for yourself so for me for me genshin's not a game because i'm a min maxer so for i i can't play this game just building up my favorite characters and making them as strong as possible because i'm gonna get to the end of that rope and be bored so i have to and this could be by design for genshin but the way that i find meaning in this game is through building many characters and testing them out at sort of an equal level and so that i can build and test as many teams as possible and compare the characters and i find that really fun that's something that really really um gets my gears growing i wish i could build up chong yun more i wish i could build up you know max out my shenha and double crowner and stuff like that and even triple crowner so i could use on field shenha um i want to try out all, all the characters and use them all and test them all and that's a goal that i've set for myself you might set yourself a goal to and and sometimes i'll have fun doing big screenshot damage with raiden you might set a goal for yourself to collect all the cryo characters and build all the cryo characters because you love cryo right if those kind of challenges don't seem fun for you if that's not what gets you grow going then maybe it's the type of game that you really do have to take a break from and wait until if they ever do add some content that you that you do enjoy because i know people like mtash right they get to a point in the game where they love min maxing their favorite characters this would be like me in a different universe i would just focus on min maxing my raiden i wouldn't be getting Linny or baiju or whatever i'd be just getting c2 c3 raiden min maxing the crap out of her artifact set and that's one way to enjoy the game but i've chosen you know a different way and basically what i'm saying is as long as you find meaning in the goals that you're working towards then you're going to keep enjoying the game but if you don't if you're not having fun then you know try some other games i play other games too you know not not just other gotcha games either so play other games go take a break you know if, if you if you take six months off of genshin it's as if you just started six months later and that's no big deal people start the game all the time and it's no big deal and maybe there'll be things for you to get hyped about when you come back and i i just enjoy the game for what it is i i if i want to be more sweaty and try hardy i play other games that have pvp and i let genshin be my sort of unwind casual game that i can chill and explore in or that i can do the abyss and test that out and have fun but i don't try and make it my everything game because i don't think 
one game can be that for anyone for any length of time. Genshin's a marathon, a game where I, I just enjoy living in the world. I enjoy, you know, I enjoy a little bit of the lore. I enjoy a little bit of the exploration. I enjoy the combat. Um, I just have, I have fun with the different parts. How to use your fragile resin? You use your fragile resin just like any resin on whatever you want. I know some people say they don't use it on artifacts. I think that's ridiculous. It's totally fine to use an artifact. Um, I don't understand that mindset at all. It is sometimes good to save it up for a new area. So if there's a character that you're really looking forward to and they're being released with a new area and a new world boss and new talent books and stuff like that, then you, it can be good to have an, uh, a reserve saved up. So I, leading up for the last six months or maybe five months or four or three, I can't remember, I saved up as much of my fragile resin for Super Fontaine as possible so that I could get Lenny's artifact set right away and, but otherwise use it however you want. Should you aim to get cons for four star character? Number one priority is to get the characters that you love. If you really love Shenha, always have a reserve for Shenha and do not let yourself go below, you know, 130 wishes to make sure you guarantee yourself a Shenha if she ever pops a surprise on the banner. Once you already have that guarantee saved, now you can be a little bit more flexible. And if there is a banner that you're looking at, like the Yalan banner right now, you don't love Yalan, but you wouldn't mind Yalan, but you really want that C1 Bennett, then maybe you put 10 wishes, 20 wishes, 30 wishes onto the Yalan banner. See if you can get yourself a copy of Bennett. And if you do get a Yalan, you only lost 10 or 20 wishes. You still have your guarantee for your Shenha and you're laughing. So that's kind of my mindset is number one, prioritize the characters that you need. Number two, you can try and snipe some four star characters here and there, as long as you don't mind getting the, the on banner character. If you really don't want Ayato and he's on the banner, do not put any wishes onto that banner. Even if you want the four star, it'll just feel bad. But if you kind of want the character, like I kind of wanted Yaimiko, for example, but not really, but I really did want cons for my Toma. So I put 30 wishes, 40 wishes, and I got Yaimiko. Um, I got a gene at, I got Yaimiko at like 30 wishes. And I was like, awesome. I got a free Yaimiko. And then I got Jean 10 wishes later. And I was like, great. Now I have, I, now I have a guarantee for Raiden, but I definitely didn't do any more after that because then I wouldn't have had my guarantee for Raiden. So that's how I like to do it. I like to play around it. I understand people say never, ever wish for four stars. I get it. But I think if you don't mind getting the five star and there's a four star you really want and you still have enough guaranteed wishes saved up for your other character, then it's fine to go for some cons for a four star. But in general, it is safer to say no. The next question is how do you transition into the late game? I think this question comes from the place of you've been exploring the open world and now you've come to a time where you're trying to min max your account and really push the hardest of the content in the game, the spiral abyss. That's kind of the late game. And the biggest mistake I see, I see two mistakes. One is trying to build way too many characters like me. When you spread yourself so thin and you don't hyper invest into specific characters, you're really going to be strained on resources from trying to level so many characters. You're not going to have enough books and mora and talents and resin and all that kind of stuff. The second mistake I see people see is being too afraid to actually farm artifacts. And so let's address both of them here. The first thing you want to do is pick two teams that are good if you're again if you're trying to push the hard content and by good I mean good synergies we'll cover this more in our ultimate team building guide which I swear will be coming out soon and so you pick let's say two teams they are gonna focus on and you're gonna min max those until the cows come home let's say one of your teams is going to be Raiden and the other team is a hyper bloom team these happen to be two teams that I clear the abyss with the most frequently the other one would be Nilu but just for example let's talk about how I would go about min maxing this team you need two solidly invested teams to clear the spiral abyss and you want one to be good with aoe and one to be good with single target in general or both of them can do both you don't want two really really strong aoe teams or two really really strong single target teams it's fine if they're like if they can do some aoe or a solid single target but you want them at least at least to be competent at least you want to have both sides competent so kazua and raiden being aoe makes this team perfectly good enough in aoe and this team is obviously extremely strong in single target so what you're going to do is hyper invest into these two teams you're going to and I would go even smaller. I would take one character and say, hey, I'm going to invest into Raiden. Now, your Raiden, it'll be a long time before it's as built as this Raiden. But you set a goal for yourself. Say each, say your flower and feather. Let's start with 30 crit value. You're going to say, I'm going to give at least 30, 30, 32 crit value to my flower and feather and at least 25 crit value on the other three pieces. And I'm going to camp in the emblem domain and I'm not going to leave until I have 30 crit value on these two, 25 crit value on these two, and at least 15 crit value value on this one. So let's say you set that as your goal. That's 60 plus 50 is 110. And then another 60 plus 15, 75. So your ride is going to be at 185 crit value after you finish, after you do, you use the standards that I said. And that's, let's say the first, the first standard. Obviously you're going to want to look for attack. You're going to want to look for ER. You're going to want to make sure you have the right main stats, either attack percent goblet, attack percent or energy recharge sands, etc. This isn't a ride guide, but, but you pick one character and you invest into them. Then 
10. And of course, you make sure that they have good talents. At this point, probably I would say level 9 is where you want to go. You could crown right in first, but at least level 9. And then let's say you go over to the other side and you start building out your official. Well, you've been farming the emblem domain, so you can use the off-piece Shimanawa pieces. You can use two-piece attack for your official and maybe strong box for two-piece thundering fury or just use off or just use gladiator pieces that you've been using all along or even two-piece wanderers troop at this point we're not concerned with getting every character their best set but while you've been farming maybe now you have some pretty good emblem pieces for singcho so you say okay on this on this team i need nahida built out so i'm gonna get the i'm gonna get deepwood nahida doesn't need to be as built out as raiden so you want to get deepwood maybe you'll get some great pieces for official maybe you use gilded dreams maybe you'll end up with a four-piece gilded dreams for official or just the two-piece emem you'll get a four-piece um, gilded dreams with em main stats for your kuki so you're farming deepwood for this team your deepwood for Nahida, Fischl, and Kuki, that domain, and you're getting emblem for Singcho, and then you're doing emblem, emblem, Noblesse from the strong box, and Viridus and Venera from the strong box for Kazua. And you just pick one character to go hyper in Nahida, then you go hyper in your Singcho, then you go hyper in your Fischl, then you go hyper in your Nahida, then you get your Kuki set up, then you get your Yalan set up, and it'll probably take you a couple months. But by the time, but you really just focus on these eight characters and try and be as efficient with artifacts as possible, of course, yes, get their talents up but don't start going over here and leveling up this character or that character focus on maxing out these characters and then once you've got let's say 180 crit value on all your characters now you go back in to ride and you say okay how can we get some 35 crit value pieces some on on her uh, on her sands and feather let's get some 30 crit value on her sorry not her sands and feather on her feather and flower and then 35 30 crit value on her on her sands you're gonna get a 200 crit value ride in that once you get to that point you'll probably you'll probably be able to 36 star the abyss and that's sort of the transition to late game you you hyper focus on two teams hyper and then hyper focus on each character and be as efficient as possible with your artifact farming so that you build them all up if you want to hear more about this my artifact you'll never farm artifacts the same way again is really good for this and also my ultimate character building guide talks about this as well who would you keep if you could only keep eight units that is a really really interesting question so i can only have two teams ever would it just be these eight like there's no way right if i could only keep eight units i'd want to be able to vertically invest on them so i could have something to wish for <laughs> okay well raiden for sure he's my favorite i think bennett kazwa almost for sure because i need them to be with raiden there's no way i'm not taking elon so then it's just these three these this team so maybe i can get away without kuki because i can use raiden for hyper bloom as well so let's say we remove kuki and then official isn't necessary i probably don't want to choose raiden yai but i could then i could put yalan on this team i could do hu tao and then this can either be a hyper bloom team or i can put raiden on this side but then what is hu tao gonna do on this side i would need sing cho on this side so you have hyper bloom because i guess if it's only eight the teams need to be fully functional so it's probably not going to be hu tao i think it really might be this because what this allows me to do is i can switch yalan onto this side and i can switch fischl on this side if there's some electro hate on one side i can switch i can switch them around if there's dendro immune enemies i can switch them around i can do double hydro i can even do no healer aggravate <laughs> and then a weird double hydro virgin probably that's never gonna happen yeah i really think that these would be the two teams it'd be sad not to not to have nilu but if i can only have two teams then i would prefer not to use nilu because sometimes well i guess if i can vertically invest in her let's see if i did nilu so i would do nilu nahida baiju kokomi and then i can invest in c2 nahida the only thing i don't like about this is hmm, maybe this i can get c2 nahida and i can get the key for nilu maybe if you've been enjoying the videos please consider subscribing if you want to support me and the channel check out our patreon if you want to join a great community who love this game check out our discord and if you don't want to do any of those things that is totally totally fine. Just watching the video has been more than enough. Thanks so much. Bye for now.